right, guys, welcome back to another episode of In the Shop with Custom Lowe's. We're going to be finishing up that curve tutorial for you guys. Another episode dedicated to curfing because it's that awesome. So let's get right to it. We're going to show you guys the rest of the steps on how to put this all together and uh, get you guys starting to curve. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please make sure you do so now. And if you like this video, make sure you drop a like. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of it. And also, please help support my Patreon by checking out the link below and helping support the daily video vlogs. All right, so just to backtrack a little bit from the last episode, we got all our lines marked out on our wood for our four different curves. Now we're doing a three inch radius, a four inch radius, a five inch radius, and a six inch radius. And this is gonna complete a whole square once we're all done with it. So the last step I left you guys off on was setting your blade depth. I recommended using some scrap pieces to perfect your blade depth and make sure you got the proper blade depth. But me personally, I like to set my blade really deep. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it is, it is about gonna scrape the final veneer. And that's exactly what we want. All right, so we're about to start cutting all these lines up. We're gonna go kerf by kerf, and I'm gonna show you guys each time as I do it. Um, I recommend clamping your piece down so it's stable or at least having a second person there if you don't have any clamps, maybe putting something heavy on it. But you don't want this piece to move at all because you wanna ensure your cuts are as straight as possible. After you're done making all your cuts, you should end up with something that looks like this. I do not use a straight edge myself, but you can. I'd recommend it if you're new to this. You wanna make sure your lines are as straight as possible. Your piece is now bendable, but without the clamp, it won't bend all the way. So bendy now, we'll get the clamps on there to finish it off. All right, so we got this first kerf all cut up. You see, it is bendable. You'll need clamps to get it to bend the full 90 degrees because the wood is, it is very tight, but it is all cut there. We're gonna jump to cutting our second kerf, which is our six, our five inch radius rather. We're gonna cut that and we'll bring you back in once we're done with that. So we got the second curve cut. As you can see, that is our five inch radius. So we have our four, our five. Next, we're gonna do our six inch radius. And lastly, our three inch radius. So let's get this five inch radius cut and back to it.
so we got our third curve cut. Now we're gonna move on to our fourth kerf, which is our three inch radius. So we got the four inch radius, the five inch radius, the six inch radius, and the three inch radius. Now they all have 15 cuts in them, all evenly spaced out. The only difference when you go to different radius sizes is gonna be the spacing between your cuts. All right, so now that we got all our curves cut, the next obvious step is gluing it together. Um, there's a ton of other products you can use. I've seen it debated a hundred times, but wood glue is what I use. Um, specifically, I use Tight Bond brand. Right now, I'm using Tight Bond 2. Tight Bond 2. Um, I stick to Tight Bond. I always either use two or three, depending on the application. Three is water resistant so it's good for stuff that's going to be outside of the vehicle like rear stunt walls and stuff like that the only thing i don't like about three is the set time is a little too quick in my opinion and the cleanup is a little messy if you're going to be staining stuff so if you're going to be doing the curse i recommend just a normal type on two or any other wood glue should suffice as well so we're going to start by putting the glue in here i'm going to show you guys how i put the glue on one very important tip is put a generous amount of glue you can't have too much, but you're better off having too much and wiping it away. So we're gonna get these glued up and I'm gonna show you the next step. All right, so basically what I'm gluing, what I do is I will just apply a generous amount of glue across the whole thing. And then I'll take a bodywork knife is what I like to use. You can use a putty knife and you're gonna work it into the seams of your kerf. Now you're gonna have some open areas like you see on here. Well, once you fold it up a couple times, you'll be able to take those away. Let me get this clamped here real quick. All right, so you're gonna see when I kind of fold it up, you get a bunch of glue that squirts out. So you're gonna take that glue and that's what you're gonna move around to your to your dead areas or the areas that the glue didn't necessarily get to all the way keep spreading it fold it again you got more glue spread out push it in again kind of keep repeating the process until you don't have a ton of glue on the outside the final step once you clamp it together you're going to swipe through that and wipe away that excess glue you're going to repeat the same step no matter how big your kerf is I'm gonna quickly glue these pieces together and I'll show you guys how I like to clamp them. So you, as you guys might have seen the time lapse, I got a little clamp happy and broke one of my curves off. Um, the shape I was trying to make is, is a pretty difficult one. It's a, a very oblong like oval. So with the four different curves, clamping it became really difficult. Um, and I just got a little too hard on the clamping. It can't happen. I guess it's a good way to show you guys that you can break them if you clamp too hard. That brings us to a very important tip. Do not over clamp them when you're clamping them together. As you see for the example, I only have clamps on one side. I highly recommend if you're building an enclosure or doing something with a kerf, clamp it on both sides for it to dry. 
um, because you want it to dry as square as possible. So on a normal enclosure, this obviously be obviously be a lot easier. But with this, I want to be able to show you guys the open face of my kerf and show you guys how it looks. So other than that, really all you're going to do is give it probably an hour and a half to dry up. That'll give you enough. That'll make it dry enough to be able to work with if you're building an enclosure. If you're going to make something standalone that is kerfed, I'd probably recommend waiting the 24 hour mark, 12 hour mark at least to start taking it off the clamps. But Hopefully this tip helped you guys. Hopefully you uh, guys can get out there, start curfing. If you guys have any questions at all, please feel free to drop comments below. I will answer all your guys' questions, try to help you guys through it as much as I can. Hopefully this whole tip tutorial, how to on curfing, taught you guys something. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Um, that's it. So guys, I'm gonna get out of here. That does it for the in the shop with custom lows episode 43 how to kerf episode part two if you guys did not see part one already make sure you check it out in my previous video i got the um got the video up on my page already so make sure you check it out if you guys like this video make sure you drop me a like if you're not subscribed yet subscribe to my channel and as always as always drop me a comment below um if you guys want to see more tutorial videos at all please make sure you drop comments below comments that get a lot of likes or maybe things that get suggested multiple times i'm definitely open to doing them in a tutorial form video i like doing these videos give you guys a little more in-depth tricks on how to do things how i do things um there's definitely a ton of different curve rendition videos so i'm not the only one i learned from a video myself as well so hopefully you guys liked it hope you guys learned something go get out there go get curfing if you guys did a curve with this video please email me pictures of them. That'd be actually really cool. I got my email in the description below. As always, make sure you guys check out my Patreon link and check out my website for all your audio needs. I got amplifiers, speakers, subwoofers, wire, batteries, everything you're gonna need for your car audio system. Make sure you check that out at www.customlows. I got links in the description below for you guys, and I will see you again on another episode of In the Shop with Custom Lows tomorrow.